Ann Kruger is an American economist born in 1934. She spent a lot of her career at University of Minnesota, Duke, the World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. Following on the work of Gordon Tullock, Ann Kruger applied the idea of rent-seeking behavior to developing economies. Now, rent-seeking is one of those strange economic words that actually mean something a little different from what the words themselves indicate. Economists refer to rent-seeking when people invest resources to take money from others or to take wealth from others rather than producing it. So rent-seeking behavior is in general inefficient. One example of rent-seeking behavior is lobbying. If an individual or group goes to the government and tries to get a subsidy, tries to get a privilege, that is rent-seeking. Another example of rent-seeking behavior is a thief. When the thief tries to steal the television from your house, that's using his labor to take resources from someone else rather than to produce wealth. For much more on rent-seeking, see our unit devoted to the concept of corruption. Ann Kruger was the first economist to try to come up with an empirical estimate of how important rent-seeking was for developing economies. It's now commonly believed that corruption and rent-seeking behavior are one of the very most important problems faced by poorer countries. And Ann Kruger noted a startling fact. She went back and looked at import licenses. Import licenses, at the time they existed, were something you had to do, a permission you had to get from the government if you wanted to buy goods and services from abroad. You couldn't just spend your money on goods and services. You needed to buy the import license. Many developing economies in the 1960s had import licenses, including India and Turkey. And Ann Kruger estimated that import licenses in India were so significant that they comprised 7.3% of India's GDP. In Turkey in 1968, import licenses were so significant that they comprised 15% of Turkish GDP. Kruger also made the point that if these import licenses are so valuable, in accord with the concept of rent-seeking behavior, people will devote a lot of resources to trying to get the import license. You get an import license in these contexts by lobbying the government, by being politically connected, by getting favors from your friends, so just think about it for a moment. If import licenses are worth up to 15% of Turkey's GDP, how much in the way of money, resources, time, effort will people invest trying to get those import licenses? Well, Kruger said we don't exactly know the number, but you can imagine that in some circumstances, people would be willing to invest up to 15% of Turkey's GDP. For instance, imagine there's a $100 prize you can get. How much money would you devote trying to get that $100 prize? Well, you might devote up to $99 or even a bit more if you had to. So what Kruger pointed out is that people running after subsidies, privileges, favors, ways of transferring wealth to themselves through the government, that this was a major drain on the resources of developing economies. And think about it. The more people that are using their ingenuity to get resources or money or favors for themselves the less talent there is going to be devoted to innovating. Kruger also did important work on tariffs and the idea of import substitution. Import substitution is when a developing economy imposes tariffs on foreign goods, hoping that its domestic producers will arise as substitutes and that those industries will grow, creating jobs. This is sometimes called the infant industry argument for tariffs. See our unit on trade policy for more on this idea. Anyway, Kruger looked at some actual data taken from several Asian countries and also from Turkey, and she found that in developing economies, protected industries did not in general have impressive or above average productivity gains. She also found that open trade in developing economies was good for productivity gains and best for economic growth.